All right, so we are going to work with slope again, but there's a lot with slope, so we're gonna be doing this for multiple days, extending what we've already done, adding to it, um, doing something that deals with it, but may look a little bit different. So you've seen this formula before. Remember when we were doing word problems and I would say, well, y equals some number x plus some number, only in place of some number, or in place of y, I would put a line there too, right? And we would say, well, that's typically our total. This is our number that, you know, goes with what's our question, how many minute hours? And so we'd put that number there and then this would be our flat rate or a thing that stays the same. So now we're going to relate that to slope intercept form, which again is something you've seen before. Y equals MX plus B. M stands for something, B stands for something. Anybody remember what that is from last year? M is your slope. B is your y-intercept. M is your slope. B is your y-intercept. And then, this is something I just found out, the letter we use for slope is a lowercase m because it comes from the French word montour, which means to climb or to rise. Rise over run a slope, isn't it? Fun fact. So the great thing is we're going to start with something that's super duper easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we're going to start with Y intercept form, picking out M and B. So if you look up here, we're picking out the M and the B. The only thing that you have to remember is to bring the sign with it. Okay? So like in this one, what's the M here? The slope is four thirds. What's the B? You would say 12, but again, you gotta bring the sign. So it's actually negative 12. What's the M here? Negative three. And if you wanna make it into a fraction and put three over one, that's fine. If you wanna keep it as negative three because you know if you were to graph it, it would be three over one, then that's fine as well. And then our B would be negative two. What about three? 15. And our B is seven. Ooh, four gets a little bit tricky, doesn't it? Well, do you have any idea what is in between this negative and this X? What number that would be? There's a one there. So this would be negative one. And do you see a number next to the where B should be? No. So that means that it is zero. Okay? So I want you to try and do these on your own. Do these on your own. 